can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how did the, all of this started? Everything started in our dormitory. I'm a physicist by uh, education uh, and I always wanted to be a physicist. But when I was a fourth year student, I wanted to earn some money for my sneakers and jeans. I never took money from my parents. So I decided to, I had a genius idea. I just thought, why not to create a little software, piece of software, you know, translation dictionary software designed in, in a month, like July. And uh, another month, August, we would sell 100 copies at $100 each. Uh, so we will get $10,000. And on September, we will come back to our classes and continue our physics. That was the plan. So how did you manage to have the R&D and investing in R&D and the, and the risk of R&D and at the same time being able to you know, ship product and go to market? When you are doing a new product, when you are, um, uh, you, you are starting a new company, the biggest error which you can make is to start developing without asking your future user. Uh, in Silicon Valley, sometimes people say, fake it, then make it. So you never start something, uh, you never invest in the development before you went to your customer and pretend you have it already. Talk to your customer, make your paper prototype, ask what if this product exists right now? What would what do you need? And get your NPS scores, get your, uh, this called customer development. Talk to at least 100. 100, 100, 100, your uh, future customers and to take notes and categorize them and see who are those people who gave you nine and 10 grades, nine and 10 scores out of NPS question, how likely you would buy this product today. And, and understand those, this segment, who may give you nine and 10. So make the product for them, make them happy. So you first uh, went to market with uh, some level of uh, product that you produced, but also reselling other ones' products. You developed enough know-how, and then at that point you went and target a specific technology uh, development. Is it still part of the of your approach? I always recommend to do that. If you have other product to start selling. Uh, to your potential target audience, try, because you will learn a lot. All, many of your hypotheses will not work out and you will make several pivots before you will start investing in your own development. Development costs money, development costs time. So if you have something to start, uh, start. But when you're doing completely new, something completely new, then it's different. It's um, sometimes you cannot, you don't have a substitution product. And this is very risky area. It's uh, called uh, new market products when the market doesn't exist. Very rarely companies succeed trying to create new markets which never exist before. At the same time, if you are entering existing mature market, then it's hard, hard to compete with your predecessors. Normally, you find a little gap between completely new market and old market. So you find the edges between them. This is what happening right now with Eva. Eva is our new AI product, which addresses the problem of employee behavior understanding and uh, engagement understanding, analytics. AI people analytics, when when computer is analyzing not just answers from uh, subjective answers from employees, but also observing employees communication and employees uh, environment on objective data, that is mostly didn't exist before. So it's a very uh, important edge between old market and new market. And that's where you could expect big, big growth. So uh, this is kind of a use case, but what new use cases the Eva.ai is bringing to the market? Eva is a unique combination between 
subjective data and objective data. Subjective data, it's uh, feedback of uh, from employees when uh, system asks questions and the police give answers. Objective data, what we call digital footprint or hard data, is actual uh, results of work. Emails sent, messages sent, uh, CRM, Salesforce records, GitHub records, Jira, Asana, all that corporate uh, sources environments when um, employees store the results of their work. Previously, as I said, when HR and leadership try to understand uh, understand their employees, and uh, they had to ask. It was not 100% solution because answers are, are subjective, but when you combine it with objective uh, observation of uh, digital footprints, min millions of data points uh, the company leaves in, in corporate data sources, then you can actually see the real picture. The big question that I have is why this is possible today and was not possible, you know, five years ago. Because neural networks, artificial neural networks became so, so advanced and so sophisticated that now they can detect that information. Each person leaves millions of data points during a year uh, you know, working with uh, a company. And the changes of that millions of data points, impossible to observe by a human. But with the neural network, if it's trained, for example, to, to detect changes preceding uh, resignation, that became possible. So previously, artificial intelligence technologies and uh, deep learning technologies were not advanced enough to detect those changes. We were able, we spent actually four years to uh, understand how to build this transformer-based and variation autoencoder-based uh, uh, architecture technologies, which now can look at time series data, and now they are trained to detect little changes which happened before something. A system actually is fed with uh, time series vectors multi-dimensional vectors of the data points and system doesn't know what exactly what features uh, uh, is, are analyzed system completely agnostic to uh, the actual semantics of the signal the only what we need is cause and effect connection between the event and uh, the preceding uh, data points i must confess this technology seems one of the most advanced i have seen and, and so it's kind of a shameful, but I have to ask you this question. So where is it going to be? Like, it is already pretty interesting performing today. But in your opinion, what will happen in the next few years? With Like, where do you envision this technology can go? What type of new use cases can open up? We envision Eva as a personal business assistant to each employee and each manager in the company. Eva observing millions and billions of data points of organization, having labels of successful and not successful outcomes, actually can learn a lot of internal wisdom of the organization. Moreover, with a 60 second short weekly surveys, which Eva AI brain generates and gathers information from um, employees by asking uh, in place about something. It enriches that information. So in the future, we believe that Eva will become a brain, which actually it's a collection of corporate wisdom, which aggregates the best experience, best knowledge of best uh, performers. And it will be a trainer, it will be a coach, it will be a assistant and uh, advisor to each person 